Why, hello to you and welcome to The Basement. We have a great show today. Wow, absolute crazy news going on out there. We're going to dig into it all. But let's get started by, you know what? Let's get started by saying thank you for being here today. Okay, it's a big deal you're here. But the biggest story that I see going on right now in the gold, in the silver market, has to do with China. Did you hear overnight on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, the Shanghai Futures Exchange, the price of silver reached $30 per ounce? What is that telling us? What is that telling us when here in the United States, we're still looking at a silver price, what, almost two and a half dollars less? Hmm. What is that telling us? Let's go out and look at some fascinating, I mean, absolutely fascinating information. We're going to look at that a little bit later, but let's start. Have you heard of this guy? Huh? The Oriental Ghost is what he goes by. Looks like his name is Bai Jaijun. Okay, here. This was last night. He said, after the Qingming Festival, the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the Shanghai Futures Exchange opened today and silver surged. I don't know if you saw this last night. It was crazy action. Silver and gold were down pretty huge last night. And within an hour, they both shot almost straight up. Chinese miners of gold and silver and related related stocks have boomed with multiple stocks hitting limit up. Over here shows the Shanghai Futures Exchange silver price shooting up. But guys, we're talking about uh, hitting limit up. That means there are limits put in the market that things like the silver price, the gold mining stocks, the silver mining stocks are limited in terms of how high they can go up in their hitting limit up. But wait, there's more out of China. Again, what is this telling us about the silver there? There's the, uh, the Shanghai Futures Exchange silver price. Unbelievable. Uh, over to the right is a bunch of Chinese writing that I can't read. <laughs> so let's go to the next one. This was the Oriental Ghost a little bit later. This is crazy. Sit down for this one, guys. Okay. Silver on the SGE and the SFE. Again, those are the, the Shanghai Gold Exchange and Shanghai Futures Exchange hit a new high since October 8th of 2012. Oh my God. Gold kept its all-time high. Silver on the Shanghai Futures Exchange closed at limit up. That means they won't, it would have gone higher, but they won't let it go any higher. It's the limit, right? The COMEX and the LBMA do that as well. Not happy with China over that. April 8th, the market data on the Shanghai. All right, all right, let's go to this next slide. I expanded it for you, Okay. China, Shanghai Gold Exchange, China, Shanghai Futures Exchange, daily report, April 8th, 2024. Look at the second line down, that's AG. You know this already, but in case you don't, that means AG is the, uh, what, the periodic table symbol for silver? Uh, Go all the way to the right. Close price in U.S. dollars per ounce, $30.57. What the heck in the United States? They're selling silver on the COMEX and the LBMA for $27.50. Guys, there is are big, big, major things going on in the silver market right now. Let's go down here to the description. Silver on the Chinese exchanges, daytime trading, closed at a new high since October 8th. All right, we read that already. Silver on the Shanghai future hit limit up. Man, can you believe? I think that's the last slide. Yep, that's a blank page. (laughs) That's a glimpse into the mind of Ron's basement. Can you believe what's going on? But what makes it even more interesting? Silver, right? A new high since 2012 in China. Is that interesting enough for you? No, it gets even better. It was up limit high. Is that interesting enough for you, Mr. or Mrs. Basement Dweller, Silver Investor? Thank you for being here, by the way, because it gets even more interesting. We've got more to think about when it comes to what's going on in China. But please give this a thumbs up. Help get the word out to more people. You can subscribe. It's free. Thank you for the super chats in advance. Susie's out mowing the lawn right now, so she can't help me. So if I miss anything, I apologize. And don't forget to go to ronsbasement.com. 
Okay, there's a forum there. There's a contest going on. Anyway, ronsbasement.com. That's easy to remember. Now back, no more commercials, no more Ron's Basement commercials during this uh, live stream. But let's go back to what else is going on, right? We know silver trading for $2.50 higher in Shanghai. Oh, that's a big deal. We know it was limit up. Oh, that's a big deal. Are you forgetting something, basement dwellers? <laughs> we can't forget one of the critical key differences between the Shanghai metals markets and the Western, the OBMI, the London Bullion Market Association, the oldest metals market in the world. We've been manipulating silver and gold for longer than your great-grandpa was alive, long longer than your great-great-grandpa was alive. But we're always trying to find the most efficient price for the metal as long as we can beat it down into oblivion. Those guys on the COMEX, right? There's a big difference, a critical difference between the COMEX and the LBMA and the Shanghai Futures Exchange and Gold Exchange, whatever the SGE. Gosh, I can't believe I forgot that. Guys, their market in Shanghai is based on physical metal, much more physical, okay? Much, much, much more. It's like the inverse. You know, in the United States, they write, what, 16 million fake 400 contracts for each one ounce of silver or gold, whatever. I'm exaggerating. But in Shanghai, it's a physical market. Hmm. What about the Russians and the uh, Moscow World Standard, the market they're opening? What about the Indians and the, I think it's the IIBX where they're trading silver? Oh, maybe that's where India got that 70 million ounces. I was talking with James Anderson this morning, the guy that makes the weekly video for, uh, for SD Bullion, a great video he puts out every week. And we were talking about like, I don't care. Mate, you don't, you don't have to like it or not. But I'm telling you, folks, the fact that India imported 70 million ounces of silver during the month of, 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 of February is a massive deal. What do you think they imported in March? I'm not expecting as much. But my gosh, James and I were talking like this. That's a huge deal. Okay, I'll say it one last time. That's like going to an NFL football stadium. It's empty. Me and you are on the 50-yard line hanging out, right? We look at all these 70,000 empty seats in the stadium. And then imagine a 1,000-ounce silver bar. It looks like a loaf of bread, little loaf of bread all comes down in one of those, each one of those 1,000 ounce loaves of bread, silver bar, 1,000 ounce bar lands in each of the empty seats. That's how much silver, almost 10% of the world's production. I digress. I talk about that too much. I apologize, basement dwellers. Um, silver continues to march upward. Silver definitely got its marching orders in, a, or in March, right? Got its marching orders in March. Where will it go into April? Let's talk about big bull markets. Let's talk about something that you may not you may not believe in, okay? But this is real, right? Some of the things we're taught to believe aren't true. Have we learned that as we've gotten older? Okay. One of which, if you're an investor in silver and gold, you may have you may have lost faith. Have you lost faith as a silver and gold investor? Are you starting to question your your decision to invest some of your hard-earned paper, unicorn fart dust, fiat money into real metal. Are you, did you question yourself over the last few years? It would be natural. Nobody knows anything for sure. Don't forget, right? Like I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not giving financial advice here, right? I'm giving my opinion. I'm giving what I believe, what I see, right? So, but it'd be easy for you. I understand to have lost some faith over the last few years. But is there reason for hope? Yes, I want to show you something visually that will be a hope, a hopeful visual. You will believe because, guys, you got to remember. Hold on here. Let me pull this up. There's that blank screen. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, this came from uh, Varani, Baroni. Um, Visualizing gold, but we're talking silver too. Bull markets and bear markets from 1970. Boy, coincidentally, that's the year that I was born. <laughs> so look at the gold bull market that went from about 1970 to 1980. You know, right? Silver went from $1.50 all the way to $50 per ounce 
in 1980. And if we adjust that $50 per ounce uh, for inflation in today's dollars, that's north of $150 per ounce. But then look at this from 1980 all the way through 2000, okay, 20 year bear market. It says the bear market was due to tight monetary policies designed to fight inflation. That was different. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. Technical problems. There we are. Hopefully you can still see this. That was what was different back then was the United States didn't have a debt to GDP ratio of 125, okay? It was a different world back then. Volcker was able to fight inflation, but that lasted for 20 years. Now, I want you to look at what happened from 2000, we're going to say all the way through 2012. We had another bull market. These are long bull markets. These are bull markets that last 10 years, okay? Keith Neumeyer, uh, the, the, the CEO of First Majestic Silver, chairman of channel sponsor First Mining Gold. You can learn more about them at firstmininggold.com. I was talking with him last week and he reminded me, he was like, yeah, that bear or that bull market that went from about 02 to 2012. I'm like, what are you talking about, Keith? A 10 year bull market in gold and silver? He was like, yeah, it kept going up and up. And we thought, oh, it's got to be over now. And then it would go higher. Oh, it's got to be over now. And it kept going higher. Are we, we are, the, here, here's, here's what I want you to see on this chart. We can have long-term bull markets, good news for the gold price and the silver price, okay? Looks like we, what, we had another one from about 2016 through 2020. We've been in a little bear market. That's that last little red part, negative 21%. But the blue is where we are now. And oh my gosh, have we ever had quite the setup? <coughs> Excuse me. Where'd I go? Here we are. Hello, basement. All 400 of you folks. Thank you for being here. Big deal, right? You are important. This is. I'm going to talk about you for a second. Then we're going to get back to this bull market. You, you really are the most important part of Ron's basement. Coming together to talk about gold and silver. Do you believe that we could have a five-year, six-year, 10-year, 15-year, 20-year? This could be this next bull market. And James Anderson and I were talking, I mean, it's like the setup, Jordan, Roy Byrne, go watch the interview I did with him. Another one of the smartest guys in the room. Guys, it, it, we are in a setup right now. <laughs> I know it feels like it's it, it is happening, and we do have reason for optimism, no doubt about it, but we are in a setup right now for silver and gold on so many levels, fundamentally, because of the monetary system that's gone on, right? The monetary decisions that have been made by the Federal Reserve, right? They have screwed this up massively, fiscally with our government, okay? Geopolitically on a worldwide basis, um, technically, Jordan Roy Byrne is, is a smart, smart man, okay? He knows the charts. He, he said the setups that we have right now are like are going to be in the textbooks of the future, right? Now, there's no guarantee, but man, oh man, when you put it all together, when you pick up all the crumbs, like Andy Sheckman says, and yes, Andy's going to be back on the show in about a month. We have a scheduled interview with Andy Sheck. Andy says, pick up all the crumbs, put them together, and what do you get? right? What do you see? That's what you have to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving you what I see out there. And boy, oh boy, I, I, I don't know. I feel comfortable holding silver and gold. Do you feel comfortable holding silver and gold? You know, I would imagine you probably do. Uh, critical, critical, critical concept that all of us, I don't, have you turned the corner, basement dweller? <laughs> For all the new people here today, that's what we call ourselves, basement dwellers. And I'm no better than you, okay? Actually, for me, you're better than me because I have a chance to learn from you. But have you turned the corner as a stacker? Let's just focus on silver right now. I'm really starting. I Can you believe we have $27.50 silver right now? Let's. I tell you what, let's run out and we're going to talk about this big concept critical to you as a stacker that we need to ingrain. We need to be reprogrammed. We're going to be, we're going to be reprogrammed. <laughs> this is like silver, uh, 
So not brainwashing, that's a bad word, but I'm not, I, but we do need to be reprogrammed in terms of how we think about silver on this one critical concept. But let us, hold on here. Let me make sure this is working. There it is. Okay, let's go check on the silver and gold price. Let's, wow, is that right? We're going to go to Pimbex. We're going to refresh. Okay, you know what? Gold's up almost $3 silver. Can, can you believe this? Thank you, Pimbex, by the way, for this quote, $27.75, almost $28 per ounce. We know that on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, that number's, what, $30.50 an ounce? So you're getting a good deal here at Pimbex. Actually, I want to say thank you to Pimbex for sponsoring Ron's Basement. This live stream, this video would not be possible without their generous support to me, and the basement dweller community. But what they give the basement dweller community that I think is even more important is an opportunity to get your hands on physical gold, physical silver, platinum group metals, and get your hands on them at a great, great price. The same products that are available on other websites right here on the Pimbex website at a better price. When you work with Pimbex, you get more metal for your money. And to me, right, besides it being a company that I trust, uh, getting them the most metal for my money is probably the most critical factor. They can also help with IRA conversions. If you're ever thinking about converting part or all of an IRA into precious metals, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex. Let's get back. You want to see me. I want to see you. 500 basement dwellers. We are moving. What's this critical factor, right? Biggest factor. We need You need to be reprogrammed. I will not reprogram uh, or attempt to reprogram you in any other manner except this one itsy bitsy little thing. And I'm getting there. I think I'm 80% of the way there, right? Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We don't expect perfection, but what you need to do, start moving toward. Think, uh, try to stop thinking of your ounces of silver. Try to stop thinking if you own gold. I don't, I'm not a big gold stacker. I own gold mining stocks, but nonetheless, stop thinking of ounces of platinum, ounces of gold, ounces of silver in dollar terms. Look, I just did it. I just, I, you know, right? Because that's what, think about it in terms of ounces, real value, right? Because the reality is, guys, the, 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 the quote unquote dollar measured, fiat measured price of silver, it could go to infinity. It could go easily to $75. It could go easily to $150. Can, can we get, can we go higher? How about $250? How about $2,000? Okay, I know it's crazy, right? You all throw tomatoes at me. No, we're talking about paper. Where is it? Hold on, here it is. I want you to do something. If you don't have one now, just do it later. But take one of these and hold it in your hand. Okay, like I am right now. Hold it, hold it like this. Woo well, if it doesn't blow away, make sure you're not somewhere with wind or talking a lot like I do, right? We're talking about paper, paper. I, I, I hate that I have to say this. I hate that our leaders led us down this path, but that is based on nothing. And then take, take one of these. Here, here's a beautiful, that's the coin of the day. Beautiful peace dollar, okay? Beautiful. Hold on, look at that. Right. Hold that. Uh, it, it's absolutely different. So that's what we need to do as stackers. Remember, it's ounces, right? Or it's bars or however you want to think about it. An ounce is a measure of weight. Weight is a measure of value with metals, right? This, right? Our good friend, bald guy money likes to refer to this as a battery. It doesn't store energy, although we know silver, right? Is unbelievable awesome at transmitting electricity it's the it's the uh it's the scale by which everything else is measured but it holds value here she comes right it holds oh look at that perfect look at that i got that in focus i don't want to move this is value this 1925 my great grandpa could have had this exact coin in his pocket and it had the same essential value to him. I could take the, he could have taken this, then I'll stop. I promise. Just bear with me. 
grandpa, right? My grandpa Hal or my great grandpa could have taken this exact coin and probably gone out and got a really nice lunch, right? A really nice nut lunch at a sit down, nice place. Guess what? Buttercup. <laughs> I could take this right now. I'd have to go to my local coin shop because, you know, that's the way it works now, but I could convert it and go immediately as long as the dollar didn't crash during that hour that I was eating. And I could use that fiat paper money that I to eat a really nice lunch. That's why we love silver and gold. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. Uh, <clears throat> look, let's go out to Kitco. We got to see what's going on in the market right now. Uh, we know uh, Pimbex gave us a great quote, but I want to run out to Kitco's site and look at the big news stories affecting silver and gold. Here, right at the very top, Lynette Zhang. Don't we love Lynette Zhang? By the way, Lynette will be back in the basement here in about three weeks. She's going to join me for an interview. Lynette had something so crazy critical to say last time she was an esteemed guest here in Ron's basement. I asked her, I said, do you feel, let me ask you this question, basement dweller, right? I know it's confusing. And even James Anderson and I were talking about this morning, like we deal with some pretty, um, like, like I'm going to say negative, but we're dealing with reality and the reality is not pretty. Okay. So it can feel crazy. And I asked Lynette, I said, does it feel crazy? She said, absolutely. And it's normal to feel crazy because as Lynette said, like we are getting toward the end days with what's going on. Look, we could all be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. And I don't want it to be chicken little running around saying, Oh, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. And I'm not trying to scare you. But the reality of the situation is not good. And Lynette said, that's what happens towards the end. Things start to feel crazy. Uh, I feel like I'm dropping a lot of names today, but uh, Andy Sheckman uses the idea of the Jenga. You know, that game where you pile up all the wood things and you take a piece out, you take a piece out, you take a piece out. And it's all standing until suddenly it's not. But Lynette goes into this, no bank is safe, implosion coming. Every single bank is insolvent. Every single bank is insolvent. And I think, you know, look, I, I'm not going to say 100% that I know that every single bank is insolvent, but based upon the fact that um, these banks are holding a bunch of treasury notes that are deeply underwater, deep, deep, deep underwater, I think it's safe to say, oh, and by the way, there's this other thing. Don't tell anybody about this. It's called the commercial real estate problem they have as well. They're underwater on those. So yes, the banks are in trouble. But I went down here. Which of these articles catches your attention? I'll tell you which one caught my attention. Choppy, consolidative action in gold after a record high hit early on. The next article, gold and silver are still, this is a good one. Gold and silver are still not overvalued as hedge funds add. This one. Gold prices due for a correction. Silver gets support. I want to see what it's talking about, silver, okay? Silver gets support from both investors and industry. That's according to Heraeus, which I think is a German um, a German uh, refiner in Ment. They sell some really cool bars. Uh, gold appears to be overbought. Let's, let's read this. You got you to gotta listen to this. Gold appears to be overbought and due for an imminent correction. Oh, no, gold's going to crash. Corrections will happen while silver is seeing support from both the investment community, comma, basement dwellers, comma, and industrial demand, according to precious metals analyst at, I can never pronounce, I can't pronounce anything. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I say Putin, Putin. Susie yells at me every day. Then I get, I'm like traumatized. Is it war? Is it war? I get in trouble for that. What's the other one? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. I used to say for all intensive purposes. Apparently, it's all intents and purposes. Anyway, Herarius said that. Uh, in the company's latest report, the analyst re noted that gold prices are continuing to rise despite the fact that rate cut expect expectations have been moderating because we know... Uh-oh. Cowbell. Thank you, Jake. Jake, thank you for that text. I'm going to ring the cowbell here in a second. Thank you. We know that, um, uh, it, and again, James Anderson, it, this can be, we, James Anderson, let me slow down. We talked about that this, this morning, okay? And we have an interview with him. It's going to be coming out in a couple of days. 
everybody's so, oh, the Fed's got to cut rates. The Fed's got to cut rates for gold and silver to go up. BS. Repeat after me. You can yell it. BS. Oh, we haven't done our smile for the day either. We'll do that while we're doing the cowbell. Okay. BS. The Fed doesn't have to raise rates for the price of gold and silver to go up. They absolutely don't. Okay. The Fed. BS. Okay. Uh, the dollar does not have to go down for the price of silver and gold. That's BS. Everything is changing. We are in, I, we talked about this back in December. We are in a new paradigm. What needs to happen, and trust me, your, your elected officials uh, and your Federal Reserve are doing a bang up job of making what really needs to happen, happen. And that is that the real value of the dollar needs to go down. The real value, right? The amount you can get at the grocery store with a hundred dollar bill needs to continue to go down. It's gone down over the last decades. It's going to continue to go down in the coming decades. And it's going to continue to go down at an ever increasing rate. Okay. Quickly here, the gold price, uh, the gold price has risen by almost 13% year to date. And this is without the aid of fed monetary policy pivot a markedly weaker dollar. Oh, we just talked about this. Boy, we could write for Kitco or meaningful resurgence in institutional uh, investment demand via ETFs, they wrote. This may leave the door open to a move even higher later in the year when the Fed finally decides to drop interest rates, which they're not going to do, uh, which in all likelihood will weaken the U.S. dollar. So what they're saying is, uh, hey, guys, Guess what? We got good news for us basement dwellers. Uh, the price of gold and silver have done very well in the face of factors that traditionally would have been headwinds to the price of silver and gold. So if those things do come into fruition, it's going to be an extra. It's like an afterburner on an F-15 fighter jet. It's going to be like rocket fuel for the price of silver and gold. That's the reality. OK, hold on here. Before I forget, it's time for the daily smile. We'll come back. Don't you worry. Where's my bell? There's my bell. Let's ring the cowbell. Thank you, Jake, for the reminder. For those of you who don't like bells, feel free right now to mute your micro or your earphones, whatever. For the guys at Goldman Sachs who are on the trading desk watching, the guys at J.P. Morgan Chase that watch Ron's basement to hear about what's really going on, you may want to turn your speakers off so your boss doesn't come running out of his office. We're going to ring the bell, but most important, I want you to join me. It's smile time. I need to smile more. Let's all smile. And I'm going to ring the bell. 200 thumbs up. Hey, while I'm at it, I, I talked about uh, channel sponsor Pimbex. Thank you. We talked about First Mining Gold with Keith Newmeyer. Let's talk about Fortuna Silver. They came out with their first quarter production numbers this morning. The company continues to perform. I'll encourage you to go learn more about Fortuna Silver at fortunasilver.com. They're not only a silver miner, but they're actually now more of a gold mining company as well. And they're doing a bang up job with that. They have operations in Latin America and West Africa. Let's go back here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bear with me. And okay. Uh, they pointed out that the gold prices are up 5% in the last few weeks, even as Fed speakers have been working overtime to talk down the markets. That's the other thing that really gets me mad. I, when did the Federal Reserve become more of a PR firm than a bank? Remember back when we were on the gold standard? No, I don't, because I was one year old when Nixon took us off the gold. But when we were back on the gold standard, I've talked to some older people, people that have been around. Nobody cared about the Fed, really, back in the 60s and 50s, right? Because we were on the gold standard. We had our money tethered to something real. <laughs> and, and by the way, it worked pretty darn well, right? Jeez, okay. Let's get to the part about silver here. Do, 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 do. We're going to speed read. Spot gold continues to show strength, blah, blah, blah. Turning to silver. Here we go. Let's see what they say about silver. This is the good part. Turning to silver, Harayas, analyst, that reminds me of like a Greek god or something, said that the gray metal appears to be rising on the back of the strong performance of the other metals as of late because 
Silver lags gold. We've heard about that over and over. The price of silver rose above $27 an ounce last week after having struggled relative to gold over the past two months. They wrote, silver appears to have benefited from both the investment, consumer, and industrial demand sectors, each making up about 50% of the total silver demand. The copper price has risen risen steadily thanks to concerns over tightening supply. Where copper goes, silver tends to follow. Now, I've never really heard that, I guess, from an industrial perspective. Oh, here's a chart we can look at. Look at that, guys. Well, I guess they're right. (laughs) There is a good relationship between silver and copper. I didn't realize that. We just learned something together. We know there's a a big relationship, a big correlation between silver and gold. We know that that relationship has been a little rocky lately. Gold's kind of taken off and left silver in the dust, right? That gold to silver ratio, it's like a big giant rubber band that expanded that it took almost at one point 90 or 95 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. We know that when you stretch a rubber band or a bungee cord, if you think of the gold to silver ratio as that out too far, eventually it's not going to break. These are God's money, silver and gold. No, it comes flying back and we get a slingshot move. Are we in for that now? You know, the Chinese, did I mention to you, the Chinese happen to think that silver's worth $30 uh, and 50 cents per ounce. But what do they know, right? They're just the biggest, second biggest economy in the world. All right, let's read this. Silver. Silver is a higher beta commodity than gold. That means it moves more radically, higher beta. So if retail investors show more interest as ETF holdings rise, then it will outperform gold. Whoa, stop the presses. Okay, I'm so sick. Are you sick of this, basement dwellers? Hearing people say, well, investor demand in the West for gold and silver are down. People are, you know, people they're using the SLV ETF, by the way. I'm hearing this from them. In, in, in inside baseball type people, they're using the SLV ETF to suck physical out of the market because there's physical silver being sucked out of the Comex, the 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 the, uh, the LBMA. And it's it's and they're using now the SLV to acquire because if you have millions and millions of shares, you can actually get physical delivery. Uh, but but guys. This is the beauty. This is happy time. Time to smile. Everybody smile with me because you know what? When just the smallest amount of investor demand for silver shows back up, even though we don't like the SLV ETF, but when people do, those other people start to buy it, it could create massive, I mean, massive, massive demand for uh, for the physical metal. And James Anderson, he pointed this out this morning. Last name I'll drop. I'm sorry, but he's a super smart guy. We had an awesome conversation. He pointed out that like that retail investor level of silver is just a really small layer of the overall silver demand picture. Okay, and it doesn't take a lot for that to get wiped out. We know what happened during C-19. Right. We know what happened during the silver squeeze a year later. We know what happened just one year ago when we had that little bitty banking crisis that nobody wants to talk about anymore. We're three of the four largest banks in the history of the universe. Well, history of the United States. But hey, we're the universe, right? Huh? Well, anyhow, history of the universe collapsed, right? Silver went bye bye. You couldn't get uh, silver. All right, let's finish this up. Additionally, and in contrast to the gold market, silver investors re-entered the market for ETFs. Oh, with 10.7 million ounces of, of inflows in the last fortnight. What the heck's a fortnight? My kids play a game on their tablets and computer called Fortnite. What the heck's a fortnight? Last night, last week, I don't know. Taking total silver ETF holdings 3% higher year to date at 720. Okay, so, oh my gosh, it finally, oh, there's the chart. Look, okay, okay. I wish we could look longer back than 2018, but we are now in an uptrend. Uh, Silver, oh, no, 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 no. Hold on here. Okay, okay. The shaded part is ETF holdings. I stand corrected, okay? The line that you see, obviously, that's the silver price. Look at this. 
Okay, that would have been a billion ounces in 2021. We're now down, down, down. Do you see that? Hopefully you can see that all the way down to today where we're at maybe what? We went up a little bit, just a little bit. But we're down to, I don't know, I'd say about 700 million ounces. Think about if we just get back to a, a, a billion ounces. I mean, it could be crazy. <laughs> all right. Hold on. What do I do here? I think I click on this maybe. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, basement dwellers. Uh, the analyst said that industrial, this is a great article, industrial demand for silver is also expected to rise this year based on recent strong manufacturing data from the United States and China, in addition to burgeoning Chinese solar installations. What about India, Eisenhower? Huh? Right? Spot Silver also saw a run-up above 28 per ounce in overnight trading. But it has since followed gold prices lower. Last trading at 27.30 an ounce. Uh, let's we got something. They we got something big, big, big to talk about here. But let's just let's just one more time today. Okay, silver 27.72. Green, green, green. Green is good. Platinum, come on, platinum, get above a thousand, will you please? Okay. Um, here, here's what I want to point out. Okay, yes. The Chinese guys, the reality is they are taking all of our silver and gold. There's a great political cartoon. I wish I could find it. It's China on one side, USA on the other, <coughs> and a wall down the middle. And the Chinese are throwing over bundles of U.S. dollars. And the Chinese are throwing, um, uh, wait a minute, yeah, the Chinese are throwing bundles of U.S. dollars. They don't want the paper dollars, Okay over the wall in the United States is th are throwing bars of silver and gold at China. But it's not just China. Who did we forget to talk about here? We forgot to talk about India as well. They're, they're building solar farms in India that are like the biggest in the world. One of them's up near the Pakistan border. And it's actually this one solar farm is bigger than Manhattan. OK, and remember, each and every solar panel, every time you drive by, I want, you, want time for smiles again. When you're out driving around on your motorcycle or your car or you're flying in an airplane or you're walking or you're riding your bike, I don't care how you move. But when you move and your movements bring you by solar panels, whether they're on your neighbor's roof, your roof in a solar farm. We got a couple of them here in Missouri off Highway 70. Look at each one of those panels and give it a great big smile because that is silver. Silver is critical for the solar industry. Photovoltaic, if you want to sound sophisticated, that's the reality, okay? Let's bring it back here. My friends, 600 basement dwellers, thank you for being here. If we get to, please, if we get to 300 thumbs up, I don't know where we are, I can't see, and Susie's out driving the tractor around. Somebody let me know and I'll ring the gong. I forgot to ring the gong the other day. But last night I was on the radio uh, talking with Pat Howland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative, speaking with Daniel Diaz from um, uh, the Citizens for Sound Money. Uh, before I came on, they had uh, uh, Rob Keats, right? You know Rob Keats, super smart guy. Uh, and then before him was Dunnigan Kaiser. Well, I was talking with these guys. I mean, there's so much going on out there in the silver and gold world right now. When I was talking with Pat and Daniel, and, and you know, let's think about this for a second. Think about the world. Everybody, here, here's, here's a bit of good news. More good news. More smile. It's Monday. We're smiling. Silver and gold are still green. More good news. The whole world is beginning to recognize the value of silver and gold. Re-recognize, re, -recognize, re um, you know, the United States kind of bullied the world. Okay, we got 300 likes. I'm going to ring the gong. Thank you, Jake. But the United States bullied the world for the last 50 years. We're the hegemony. I can't say that word either. That's another one that drives Susie crazy. Hegemony, we were the world power. Maybe I should say it that way. We ruled the world. We were anti-gold and silver. The rest of the world, the whole world, the whole planet is now reclaiming, uh, re-recognizing, awakening. It never went away, the value of silver and gold. It's going on on a worldwide basis. Where's my note, okay? The only place 
The only place that it's not going on is at a federal level in the United States, a federal level. Because on a state-by-state state level, we got a wave of legislation, legal tender legislation. So the whole world, but then the United States federal government, no, no, no gold, no silver. You need, you need this stuff. This is valuable. This is valuable. I won't go there, okay? But then on a state-by-state state basis, oh, Missouri, oh, you know, although there's like 25 states that have either passed or are in the process of working on <coughs> passing legal tender legislation. And then on a personal basis, all the people in the world, you and me, we have recognized there is big move. Guys, it is real. It is happening. And it's happening right now. And again, it's about ounces. It's not necessarily about, oh, it's worth this much in U.S. Who cares? Who cares? Okay. Did anybody care about how much an ounce of silver or gold was worth in a U.S. dollar 400 years ago? No. They'd be like, what's a U.S. dollar? Likely 400 years from now, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Probably won't be alive. But will your great, 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 great grandchildren, will they know what a U.S. dollar is? I'll tell you what they will know is if that silver or gold that you have gets passed down and nobody converts it into anything else, they'll they'll know what that is and they'll be thanking you for it. No doubt about it. All right, guys, thank you for being here today. You're the best. What did I forget? Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for going to ronsbasement.com and registering. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Carlos. <coughs> hold on, Carlos. Carlos, hold on. Carlos just put a comment, said, get your weight in silver. I've heard it said that in India, the grandparents tell the grandchildren, you should you should own your body weight in silver. And there's not enough silver to go around. Own your body weight in silver and own as much gold as you possibly can. Let's ring the gong for you. 600 people, 300 thumbs up. Thank you, Jake. Thank you to all the moderators. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do me a favor. I'm doing it. Type eight. Eight is for the those that moderate, and those that moderate are great. They make all this possible. Time for us to ring the gong for 300 thumbs up. I got to smile. <laughs> smile with me. It feels good. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a great day. On behalf of Susie and myself, all the moderators, all the basement dwellers, the ones of you who've been around here now for years, the ones of you who maybe just joined us today, thank you. Okay, be nice to yourself. That's the best place to start. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon.